Good evening. Welcome to State of Business on our television with me, Kavesh Kapurera. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Prime Minister vows to develop the traditional carpentry industry with subject experts. The price of petrol 92 octane increased by 3 rupees. News in detail. President Maitri Pala Sirisena instructed the officials to complete the construction of the Pandit Amaradeva Music Hermitage by the 31st of August and bestow it to the public soon. President Maitri Pala Sirisena gave these advices to the relevant officials while engaging in an observational visit to inquire about the construction works of the Pandit Amaradeva Hermitage. Thus, this hermitage will be built memorizing Pandit Amaradeva's paramount service to the music industry. Thereby, the constructions of the Aspur commenced on the 28th of August 2017 in accordance with the request made by Pandit Amaradeva when he was alive and a promise made by President Maitri Palasi Rasena. This musical hermitage is being built in a land extent of 120 perchers that belongs to the Housing Development Authority near the Apegama in Batramulla. Along with a cost of 200 million rupees and the Asapu is comprised of a musical library, documentation area, conference hall, auditorium and an open-air theatre. Addressing a group of carpenters from Moratua yesterday, Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe asserted that the government will modernize and develop the carpentry industry while conserving the forest cover of the country. He also said that the controversial circular will be amended and he has already discussed with the relevant authorities regarding the matter. Revisiting President Maitri Palasirisena's decision to ban on mobile sawmills and the use of chainsaws, Premier Vikramasinghe emphasized that the country's forest cover may drop further if the usage of chainsaws continue to increase and that the government is committed to conserve the remaining 28% of the forest cover of the country. Prime Minister Vikram Singh also mentioned that the new technology can be exploited to modernize the traditional carpentry industry, particularly in Muratua, which is well known for the woodworking along with assistance from Muratua University and subject expertise. Prime Minister Vikram Singh stressed that this industry should be tuned into a mega industry and that the traditional expertise should be open to other countries too. He further said that the loan facilities granted under the Enterprise Sri Lanka program will also be made available for the carpenters to develop and modernize this industry. Subsequently, Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Singh instructed State Finance Minister Ran Vikram Ratna to form a committee and formulate a report on the development of the industry. The Ministry of Finance announced that following the monthly fuel price review, the price of petrol 92 octane was increased by 3 rupees but no change on other categories. Meanwhile, the Lanka Indian Oil Company also increased the price of petrol by 7 rupees. The Ministry of Finance announced that the price of petrol 92 octane has been increased by 3 rupees per litre with effect from midnight yesterday. Meanwhile, considering the price revision announced by the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation, Lanka Indian Oil Company has also decided to increase the price of petrol 92 octane by 7 rupees per litre with effect from midnight yesterday. Thus, the revised price of petrol 92 octane at CPC outlets will be 138 rupees, while the revised price, which was previously at 140 rupees at the Lanka IOC last month, will accordingly be 147 rupees now. According to a release by Lanka Indian Oil Company, Senior Vice President Pramod Jain said that there is no increase in the price of Lanka Uto Diesel and Super Diesel Euro 4 despite the escalation of the petrol and diesel prices in the international market in the recent months. The government commenced the second phase of the Statement of Cooperation Intent Plan introduced by the Department of Public Enterprises in 2017. Accordingly, 10 state-owned enterprises were selected for the second phase to operate in a commercially viable manner in order to achieve macroeconomic objectives of the country. The government signed the Statement of Corporate Intent with 10 selected state-owned enterprises yesterday at the Ministry of Finance. The government has selected Sri Lanka State Plantation Corporation, Urban Development Authority, Lanka Satusa Private Limited, Central Engineering Consultancy Bureau, State Timber Corporation, Kurnagala Plantation Private Limited, State Pharmaceuticals Corporation, Milko Private Limited, National Livestock Development Board and Geological Survey and Mines Bureau for the second phase of the program. The Statement of Corporate Intent is a tripartite agreement signed among the Secretary of the Ministry of Finance, Secretary of Relevant Line Ministry and the Chairman of the respective state-owned enterprise on behalf of the Board of Directors. Implementing this move, the government expects to operate state-owned enterprises in a budgetary independent and commercially viable manner, improving the corporate governance practices. The Finance Ministry announces that this will also strengthen the human resource management, improving the transparency and accountability in operations to ensure efficient and effective business operations. Stadium for more news after this short commercial break.
Welcome back. Attending the 19th Exporter Symposium organized by the Sri Lanka Export Development Board, President's Coordinating Secretary Senek Abe Gunasekara explained the measures taken by the government to strengthen the research and development projects. So R&D means that is research and development. This is something new to Sri Lanka. Earlier actually now, all these years we have been dealing in merchandise. But now it is a new thing that which has come to highlight that is R&D. So research and development. So these are things that His Excellency the President has given priority today. Even by a cabinet paper, R&D projects are recognized and R&D projects are given a lot of priority. So there was a concession given by the BUI before. But since there was no R&D projects came for the last so many years, five years over, they have given up that. So that is why I proposed the BOI to reactivate those concessions and encourage more investors to come on R&D. And uh, His Excellency the President also has understood this and done a special cabinet paper and given priority for this industry, R&D. So in time to come, you can see that they will be benefited, they will be given research facilities, they will be exempted from certain tax areas so they can have the benefit and give that service to the country. The World Bank has cut Sri Lanka's economic growth forecast to 3.5% from earlier forecasted 4% due to anticipated rise in political uncertainty and impacts of the Easter Sunday attacks on investor sentiment and perceptions. World Bank's latest flagship report titled as Global Economic Prospects June 2019, Heightened Tensions Subdued Investment, also warned that anticipated re-escalation of political turbulence amid elections could potentially lead to fiscal slippages with expanding public spending and a resurgence of non-banking financial sector funding issues. According to the latest report by the World Bank, South Asia's growth remains robust despite headwinds from the global economy amid weakening trade and manufacturing regional output is estimated to have expanded by 7% in 2018. Net exports continue to contribute negatively to regional growth with import growth remaining stronger than export growth amid solid domestic demand. Regional inflation has remained moderate in most countries, partly reflecting broadly stable commodity prices. However, Pakistan has recently experienced a significant rise in inflation driven by currency depreciation, which was followed by several rate hikes over the course. In India, the largest economy in the region, GDP grew by 7.2% in the fiscal year 2018-2019. Growth in Sri Lanka slowed marginally to 3.2% in 2018, an account of weaker domestic demand, the World Bank report says. It further says that the decline in international reserves and elevated political controversy contributed to depressed investor sentiment, as well as Sri Lanka's sovereign credit rating was downgraded by one notch by some rating agencies in 2018. The report also says the quote begins, In Sri Lanka, a rise in political uncertainty in the months leading up to the presidential and parliamentary elections, which will take place in 2019 and 2020 respectively, could weigh on business confidence. In addition, recent security-related incidents could dampen investor sentiment and perceptions. The quote ends. The World Bank further expects that economic growth this year will pick up marginally to 3.5% and to average 3.6% over the forecast horizon, driven by a pickup in service sector activity and solid infrastructure investment. Let's take a look at several stories for the day in brief. The Special Investigative Committee appointed to inquire the Easter Sunday terror attack submitted its final report to President Maithri Palasirisena yesterday. According to the President's Media Division, the final report of the special three-member committee was handed over to President Sirisena, the President's official residence. The Supreme Court Judge Vijit Malal Gola handed over the report to the President at the presence of other members of the committee, former IGP NK Ilanga Khon and former Law and Order Ministry Secretary Padmasiri Jayamana. Sri Lanka Shangri-La Colombo, which was one of the three hotels targeted by the Easter Sunday the bombing will reopen tomorrow, June 12th. Accordingly, all dining establishments of the hotel will reopen for servicing tomorrow from 6 p.m. onwards, while room stays will reopen from Saturday, 15th of June. Hotel and management said that the decision to reopen was taken following the relaxation of the travel advisories and the reopening of the other targeted hotels. The comparatively high level of education, literacy and numeracy skills in Sri Lanka attracts him to set an electronic manufacturing plant in Sri Lanka, said by the president of Japan's Toslek Company Limited, Jitsuo Mikasa, during a visit to Sri Lanka recently. Toslek president also reiterated his confidence in Sri Lanka and company's plans for the business expansion. He further noted that the average Sri Lanka factory operator is diligent, agile, understands instructions and is capable of meeting the highest quality standards in manufacturing. The Department of Meteorology warns the public on strong gusty winds up to 50 km per hour over the island and of showers and thunder showers at times in western, southern, central Sabaragamu and northwestern provinces. 
Moreover, several spells of light showers will occur in Anuradhapura, Vaunia and Mana districts. Fairly strong gusty winds up to 50 km per hour are likely over this island, while strong gusty winds up to 60 km per hour are likely, particularly in the western slope of the central hilly areas, northern, north central and northwestern provinces, and Ampara and Munragala districts. The sea areas off the coast extending from Trincomalee to Putlam via Kankasanthure and sea area off the coast extending from Mathura to Batiklo via Hambanthota can be rough at times as the wind speed can increase up to 60 km per hour. The other sea areas around the island can be fairly rough at times as the wind speed can increase up to 50 km per hour and the naval and fishing communities are requested to be vigilant in this regards. Stay tuned for stock updates after this short commercial break. Welcome back. Trading at the Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a positive note today. The All Share Price Index gained 12.22 points to close at 5,335.29, and the SMPSL20 gained 10.67 points to close at 2,488.15. The turnover is 411.6 million rupees with 23.5 million shares of volume. Up next is Forex rates. Well, that's the wrap of the bulletin for the day. Signing off with the promise for tomorrow at the same time with nothing but the latest. Thank you and good night.